Hello everybody, it's Crafty Rhea. I'm back to make some more recycled Christmas cards. I'm going to take two cards from my Christmas card stash and turn them into winter cards instead of Christmas cards. So that way I can send them in January. So the, I took these two cards out of my stash. They are actually Christmas cards, but I believe that this one, if I take Tis the Season off, it would make a nice winter card because the house is not really decorated for Christmas. And then this one here, if I cut off the sides and that angel, this would make a nice winter card, maybe with a tea bag inside. And you could um, give them warm wishes in January. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So I use the my typical card base, which is an A2 size card. It is four and a quarter by five and a half. It is one sheet of cardstock folded in half and cut in half to make it easy. One sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this card apart. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this angel from the inside. I can possibly reuse it on another card. So I'm just going to cut off the piece on the inside, I guess there's three, there, I'm just, I just cut that off on the back, and then we have that angel, and I will put it aside for another project, I'll put it back in my Christmas card stash, and then that leaves me this card, and I'm just trying to see how much of this card I could take apart. I'm going to start by cutting off, this card is like doubled, so it's like four pieces of cardstock. So it's too thick for me to cut straight down the spine. So I'm just going to cut the front off since I don't need that edge anyway. <clears throat> it is pretty thick. So, I'm going to see how much of this I could salvage, because I might be able to use that as a background paper. So here you see me doing a card in real time, unprepped, um, unscripted, <laughs> so you can see what I go through when I make cards. And whenever I try to take two pieces of paper apart that I've either glued together or taped together incorrectly, or I'm doing something like this, I use this bone folder. Um, it has like the tapered edge, and it's really nice and strong. And instead of ripping your paper apart like this, because you can ruin your paper, you can tear it, this, I leave it flat, on, I try to leave it flat on the table and just use that kind of as a wedge between the two. And it just takes that glue apart without really damaging the front of your paper. All right, and then I'm just going to cut that, I'm going to cut the fold off. So now I have two sheets of paper like that. I'm going to do the same with the back. I'm going to start, well, I don't have to cut the fold off there. Okay. I'm going to, this one's nice and easy to do. Because I might want to use some of this card some of this card base to mat my project. So I'm going to cut that fold off on that side and pitch it. And this doesn't really want to open very well. Let's see if I can get it to that fold. There we go. That's better. There we go. So then I have all these extra pieces that I can use to mat my project on. And this had tape on the back, 
so it might be a little harder to use, but I might be able to, so I'm going to set those aside and see. So for this, the front of the card, I do want to cut out the focal image. I don't care so much about the sides. I know that's a Christmas tree, but if I cut that off, it's just going to be a little triangle in there, and I don't think they would notice that it's a Christmas tree. So I'm going to just cut around that focal image, and since it already has that little bit of a white edge on the very edge there, this little white edge, I'm going to try to leave it and see what that looks like. I can always cut it away if I don't like it. Of course, I just thought of something I should have done instead. I probably should have cut that with my decal scissors to give it a neat edge, but it is too late. So now that, I'm just going to throw those scraps away. I think I'm going to cut in to the picture because that does show too much of that Christmas tree and it looks like a Christmas tree. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that border off all the way around. And I don't know why it seems to want to be crooked for me. There we go. All right, that's better. Now you just get that little triangle in there and it's not so much looking like a Christmas tree. So here's the focal image that we'll use for this card and it is just the mugs of hot chocolate or tea or whatever you decide that they are, coffee. And you can send um, one of the little K cups or you can send a tea bag or whatever with it or a Starbucks gift card, whatever. It makes it a nice um, a nice way to send a neat little gift for someone. And then I thought I could use some of this to mat this with. Now the limiting factors here is this here and then you've got some, um, you know, uh, writing on the bottom there. But I think there's enough of that that I can mat it. That'll work out really nice. I thought I would use this to mat it, but there's all this tape on the back. And if I were to even cut cover this up and use that color, it the tape is going to show. So I don't think the back of this is going to be very usable. And if I try it this way, the stars will be in the way. So I don't think that's going to be usable. And then this one here, I don't think there's going to be enough usable area on it either. There might be. I still think I'll get a better border on this. But I need to see how big I need to work this up to. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down, and then I'm going to cut around it and make the mat. I can always cut the mat smaller if I want. I try to use pieces of the card that I'm using, um, that I'm recycling, because the colors tend to go together really well. I don't know that I could take this piece off. It's kind of glued in there pretty good. So I'm going to leave that alone. I don't want to ruin it. All right, I'm going to put it on like that. And then I'm going to cut around it. I need to 
cut a little more off that side. I was trying to make this side equal to this side for the width. I did it too much there. Okay, and now I can cut this other side off. I still made it too wide. Not very good at eyeballing this. Not on camera anyway. When I do this off camera, it's always perfect. Sure. I hope you believe that. I wouldn't lie to you. All right, so then I have that piece. Still have too much on this side. So I'm going to give that a trim. There. It's kind of like getting your hair trimmed. Oh, just a little more, a little more, a little more. Then you don't have any hair left. And I did take too much off that edge. So let me trim up the other edges. <laughs> I hope nobody is really laughing at me. All right, here we go. This is it. There, we got that matted. Now, when I was looking through my papers from the other video, I spotted something I think I might like on this card. And that was in this paper pack. There's some purple paper. And I don't know, if you know me, you'll know that purple is my favorite color. And I think that's going to go really good. Yes, that's a two thumbs up. If you like it, give me a thumbs up, please. If you don't like it, well, I'm sorry, don't give me a thumbs down. Because then I'll just cry. I'm thinking I want to do the whole background of this card in this purple and have it matted on that. So I'm going to do it a quarter of an inch smaller than the card. So I'm going to make my first cut here this way at four inches. And that leaves a larger piece of scrap for something else, especially since it's purple. And then five and a quarter inches. I always double check it on my card base in case I messed up. That leaves an eighth of an inch border around in the white. And then I have that. So then this leaves, I'm going to try to get rid of that curl a little bit without creasing my paper. All right, that's a little better. So I, I like it a lot, but it needs something down here, a piece of ribbon or lace or something. So let me see what I have in my stash. I have bling. I'm going to say right now, I'm coming clean. I have a problem with bling, a big problem. I have too much bling. Well, I don't know, can you have too much bling? I don't think so, but I have a lot of bling. <laughs> and I know, y'all probably think I'm crazy, but I do have a love of bling, really. I do. Okay, those are silver, not so much. Let's see. That purple doesn't go. I was hoping it would because that's what I was thinking about. I've got some gold, which would match the cups. So I'm going to put that there. See, this is why it takes me hours to make things because I um, go through all my stuff. Now, this is really cool. Isn't that like the coolest bling? It's like these little pyramids on squares. I have it in black, too. That would be a good for a New Year's Eve card. I just love this. I've never used it on anything. And look, I've got more bling stuck to my bling. 
<laughs> All right, so yeah, I have a little problem when it comes to bling. And that's really pretty too. I think that, I need to hold it up so I can see it good. That looks good with that. I want to put that there. Although that's going to be big in a card. Um, it's going to make the card bulky. But if you put a tea bag or hot cocoa in there, you'll have to just mail it in a bigger envelope, a thicker envelope, and pay the difference in postage. Um, anyway, because a tea bag, I don't know if it would go through first class mail very good. This is neat. I use this a lot in the. Um, 50th wedding anniversary I made, album I made for my in-laws on the different pages with cars and I think maybe on Todd's page, things like that because I think it's like, it looks like nail heads or something manly. I think it's kind of cool. But I do love some of those blings. So I'm going to keep those out. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet because, you know, I have too many choices. But I do, yeah, I have a little problem with them. I need to go to BA, Bling Anonymous, and get on a 12-step program to get off of the bling. And then I have another problem, which is glitter. Anything with glitter, like these glitter ribbons. And I don't know why, but I thought I had a purple. And I'm very sad that I don't have a purple. I'm going to have to go find a purple. But I have this gold ribbon, and I have pieces of bling everywhere. I have this gold ribbon, which I think is really pretty with that as well. That's what I was actually thinking of. And I have this gold bling, which I would probably rather use than cut that whole sheet. <clears throat> I also have this sheet that's sticky already on the back, which might be my best option. This, um, this here, this, all of these glitter ribbons, and this are from the Dollar Tree. Just in case you're wondering and you need to feed your addiction. These I bought online from somebody many years ago. Maybe not many years ago, but a few years ago. And man, I just love this. Okay, I don't know what I want to do. This is what makes it hard, because now I'm on video and I have to pick something. Where if I wasn't on video, I'd put it aside and I'd come back a couple hours later and decide what I wanted to do. All right, so anyway, I'm I know I'm going to have it like this. So, let me see. Let's pretend this is cut into a strip. Maybe not that big of a strip on the bottom. So I have that as a choice. And, you know, there's not a lot of contrast there. It pretty much blends in. And then I think that's going to be the same. I do, I like, out of the, this color, I like this better. And then I have this which I think gives a really good contrast to the purple paper on the back. I like that a lot. It's very um, classy looking. And I think I like that better than I would like this on it even, or this. So if I put this here, let me see. What if I <laughs> did one row of these studs over top of that ribbon? Hmm, what do you think? One row of studs? I think this is not wide enough that way. But I think it would be this way. I'm thinking that might actually be very pretty. What else might be pretty is, you know, because I have a shortage of bling. I also have this bag, bag of bling. And I thought maybe that pink would look pretty. 
as they row on there. And I also have, oh no, I'm missing a bag of bling. Don't worry, I found it. I have this tiny bling, and I know I have purple. Because a girl should never be without purple bling. But I don't like that color purple with it. It does not work. And that pink is too dark, but that pink is the right pink. So I guess it's more of a pink than a purple. And I could do like that on it. I think that's too small, but I think I know where I'm going to use this. I'm going to make you wait, though before I show you what I do with that. All right, I think I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go totally crazy here. All right, I'm gonna cut this a little bit bigger than this piece of paper. And I'm going to adhere this down. I'm just doing it, I'm going crazy. Here we go. I'm adhering this down to the backing. Like so. Try to just eyeball it, make sure it's kind of in the center. There. I have so much bling on my table. Okay. And then I'm going to take this and put this here. I'm just going to kind of put a piece there. There. All right. And then when I do the back, I put adhesive from here all the way to the edge of here. So we have a double piece of adhesive. See what I did there? I go all the way. Uh-oh. The power went out. Okay. The power came back on. All right. Let's continue. <laughs> That's the second time I did that this evening. All right. So just pretend you blinked. And if you didn't blink at the right time, rewind the video and just keep practicing so you get that blink in there right at the same time the power went out. Okay? And I'll blink as well, and we'll, we've got it. All right. There. I think that looks pretty good. If the power goes out for real, I'll have to stop the video and then I'll pick up where I left off and figure out how to edit the video. All right. I hear my husband in the kitchen. I wonder if he's getting ice cream because that would be good, but not till I'm done with my video. Because I'm not very good at editing and I won't be able to take an ice cream break. All right, so I'm gonna do something really wild. I'm gonna cut this. Yes, I'm gonna cut this. So I have to see how many I need to make, oh no, I think he's just getting ice. So it's not ice cream, so just ice. So he's probably just getting a glass of water. It's not quite bedtime, it's a Friday night. He usually gets a glass of ice water when he goes to bed. All right, so I think I'm gonna cut this into a strip because I won't know how it looks until I cut it and do it. And I should have marked it like this first. All right, so I'm gonna knead it, cut at that one. And then I'm going to just cut down the center between the two. I hope you can see what I'm doing. There. So I just have that and then I have I have it on that. And I think I kind of like it. I think that's pretty cool. It adds a little bit of interest to it. I'm going to put this on last because I'm going to use some white tacky glue. And um, 
it will move all over the place if I put it on first. But meanwhile, I want to use this. Now these cups have these little squares, and I was thinking, I don't know if I want to cover up those squares or leave the squares since they kind of go with these squares. So I'm just gonna lightly put this down on the cup and see if I wanna cover those squares. I don't wanna cover those squares because I think they look really good with these squares here. So I'm not sure if I wanna do anything with this bling. Let me see what I think. Let me get a bigger piece. If I wanna frame that whole picture with this instead just to kind of bring the bling up into the picture. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So, I just line them up, and then I take my fingernail and I push it down just flat to the paper and lift up on it because they're just adhered by a strip of glue. I love this bling. I, I get these little blings on AliExpress. They're about 60 some cents a sheet with free shipping. So it's very inexpensive to use, I think. They're versatile. They come in all kinds of colors. And you can order one sheet and have free shipping or you can order a bunch and have free shipping. So that's kind of nice. And they also come in pearls, and they come in larger sizes as well. All right, so I'm gonna put this bling up the side of this card. So if you guys are watching this before Christmas, let me know if you're ready for Christmas yet. And if you're watching it after Christmas, let me know how your Christmas was in the comments below. How many Christmas cards did you send this year? And how many did you receive? I sent about 150. I was in a card exchange with the Carnival Cruise Group. I'm a cruise addict. And um, we only had to send, there were 120 people in it, and we only had to send to half of the people. But I sent to everybody. And I have gotten back probably over 50 cards by now, um, just from that group. I've gotten quite a few from family and friends. So I'm gonna have a blast when I take those off of my wall and start recycling them for next year. There's some of them that are just so awesome that I cannot wait to recycle. It's hard for me to leave them up on that wall and not play with them. All right, so there we go. I made that kind of blinged out around that just to add some sparkle up there. I use these little things a lot to outline letters on cards and that sort of thing. Really cool, it's really fun to do. So then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna glue it down to here. And I don't know if I'll be able to use sticky tape for it, which would work best if I could. So I'm gonna try it and if it doesn't work, then I will um, use tacky glue. I'm looking for something as I'm talking. That's why I'm pausing. I can't find my little block. I have a um, little stamping block that I use to tear this off. So I just used my fingernail. I have a little clear stamping block that I set on the edge of that and it just tears right off. I don't know what this tape is called. I got this on Wish or AliExpress or something, but um, I call it tear tape because it tears. 
and I've heard other crafters call it that. And maybe that's a brand name. I don't know. I'm burnishing this on here so it sticks to that ribbon. Because sometimes it's really hard to get tape to stick to ribbon. And then I just peeled the top off. And let's see if I can get this to stick. I always prefer to use dry adhesive whenever I can on things. Yeah, I think it'll hold it. I just got it over too far. Start it on the very edge right there. Okay. And these are actually plastic. They're not metal. So they're light. They're not very heavy. But that might be too bulky to put in the mail. Maybe not. I was going to raise the image up, but I decided against it since these since this was going to add bulk. So anyway, that's what we have there. I think that's going to be a really neat card. It might be a nice hostess card for someone or um, birthday or just thinking of you. Without a sentiment on it, you could use it for anything. And then you can write what you want inside. And I think it would be great to hold a... Um, Starbucks gift card or a tea bag or something like that. That's really cool. Well, this video went pretty long, so I'm not going to make another card in this video. I just wanted to show you the back of these. They kind of have um, a little indentation, which if you use glue, it's really nice because it's a place to hold your glue without it spilling out. All right, well, I got to use some of my bling. I'm so excited. Never used that bling before. Well, thank you so much for watching my video. I appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think and um, answer some of the questions I asked just for fun. And if you like what you see, please subscribe so you can be notified of all my videos. I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Bye now.